Good afternoon and welcome back to another ironic introduction to another video. Today I have all of the uncollected boss fights for the excommunication uh, monthly uncollected event as well as some four star footage uh, from my uncollected completion with only four stars. Now before each of the fights I'm going to go through the nodes as well as how you should play around them slash maybe like champion consideration uh, and playstyle consideration etc. Uh, and then I'll like comment over my fights uh, one by one because they're not perfect fights. This is really just a completion run uh, but it'll give you a good idea of what you're looking at and uh, kind of things you need to look out for as well uh, but as far as like actually how to approach the fight you know do as I say not as I do because uh, this footage is from my first attempt through and so uh, now I actually know how to handle them uh, if there's like a market for it or people are really interested I can post up some one-shot videos uh, later in the month but I'm guessing by then there'll be plenty of one-shots out already uh, this is mostly just for those people who are impatient and really want to know how to take these bosses down right now so that said first up uh, we have Colossus uh, and again there'll be timestamps in the description below as always uh, but we have Colossus and his nodes are enhanced armor up uh, you got Mystic Ward, Heavy Handed, Empowered Immunity, and Aspect of War. So uh, he's going to be a bit tankier. You're not going to be able to nullify his armor ups. Uh, his heavies are going to be unstoppable. Every time you try to bleed or armor break him, assuming you're not using a tech champion, he's going to gain power. And Aspect of War means uh, over the course of 50 seconds, your block proficiency is de going to decay to zero. So eventually, you're not even going to be uh, blocking very well. So you do want to get a lot out of the fight, slash maybe get into an intercept kind of a play style by the time 50 seconds has passed um also like he's incinerate immune as well so essentially this is a free fight like it's really not that hard just don't bring an armor breaking champion unless it's a tech uh don't bring a bleeding or an incinerate applying champion and don't rely on nullify to get past the armor uh ops on colossus uh otherwise you can play pretty simply for the most part so i go in here and i decide to quake him uh because aspect of war is like really irrelevant against quake uh and this is a four star quake and you can see just like one quake rotation he's already sub 75 percent uh you know this first quest a lot of times you can just bring in a really really heavy hitter and just force your way through uh just because of the health pool uh, but I love Quake. Even as a four-star, she does some really, really good work. Up to the second rotation, or the third rotation, honestly, don't even know. It's just he gets obliterated so fast by this, like, completely ignore the nodes gameplay. Uh, but yeah, nice little fight with Quake here, uh, and he's down. So that is the Colossus fight, at least. Next up, we have the Sentinel fight. So uh, the Sentinel fight has armor resistor bubble shield hurt lock locker and special delivery so essentially the first three nodes translate to he's gonna be tankier than normal so you can expect kind of a longer fight especially on like the second quest uh boss here but hurt locker and special delivery this is really what is going to affect your play style uh as well as like bear in mind that once you've blocked 10 blocks uh his next attack is going to be unblockable so uh, just kind of be mindful every time you block that eventually he's going to have an unblockable attack uh, so you're going to have to like either properly sidestep or intercept in order to avoid that but a lot of times uh just kind of like the way rng works it's going to be when you're trying to dex a special so just make sure you dex his specials to be safe um but additionally what you want to do is you want to bring champions with some form of power control hyperion not power control power gain Hyperion, Ghost, these are champions that just like really, really rock in this kind of a scenario uh, because you don't have to worry too much about special delivery. You just focus on Hurt Locker instead where you alternate throwing special ones and special twos. Uh, but if you don't have a power gaining champion, all you have to know is that you have 15 hits to throw your special one. Um, so essentially what you do is you hit Sentinel like 10 to 12 times and then you like parry, medium hit, throw a special one, uh, and then you have 15 hits to build up to a special two. And then, you know, uh, once you're around 12 to 13 hits consumed, you parry, throw your special two, and you alternate in this way. But you want to make sure that you get the most out of your 15 hits before throwing your special. So just don't throw your first special, like, immediately. Try to use as many of your special delivery hits first to get as much power as possible. After that, uh, the fight's not too, too bad, as long as you're dexing the specials and being mindful of uh, the bubble shield. So I forget who I go in here with, uh, to be honest, but we'll see very soon. Uh, so I guess I go in with Ghost. Yeah, Ghost is a great option. I don't have Wasp Synergy Bear in mind, so I think I make some mistakes. Uh, but Ghost is just a really absolutely great champion for Hurt Locker and Special Delivery because she doesn't have to worry too much about the limited number of hits. And the extra power gain she has just makes it really, really easy 
uh, to rotate between special two and special ones. Like I said, I don't have wasp synergy and I completely forgot. So I end up throwing the special two and not like timing it right. And even then uh, here, I just thought he was going to go in and lack of wasp synergy bone me hard. Um, but that's okay. It's just the second quest. So I'm able to like pick up. I got lucky with like the lack of aggression here. Uh, Dex the special two. Nothing too special here, especially easily with ghosts just because you don't have to dodge the first hit. Uh, so now I'm building back up to another special two. And boom, I wait for the proper intercepts here and Sentinel is down. Very, very, very easy fight. Next up is going to be a Carnage boss on quest three. Now, Carnage, uh, he's going to have Enhanced Bleed, Debilitate, Aggressive, Heavy Hitter, meaning his heavies are unstoppable, True Strike, and Biohazard. Uh, so the Carnage, honestly, out of all of the bosses, this is literally a free fight. Just bring a Bleed Immune to this fight and, you know, enjoy the really good time. Because as long as you're not getting hit, as long as you're not trying to interrupt his heavy, you, like, wait for it to properly be over with, because uh, he doesn't throw his heavy too, too often, you can just do any kind of playstyle you want. Just standard parry combo, um, all that fun stuff. Just be mindful, uh, you know, that, you know, it's still a carnage. Overall, it's a relatively good time. So uh, my issue here is that I'm bringing a uh, Guillotine 2099 into him, and he's passively power gaining because of the armor break on me. Uh, very, very poor decision on my part. Uh, I do get lucky with that heavy, and then he throws a special, so I'm able to get my rotation around. But even then, Guillotine 2099, not a bad answer for the carnage as long as you're careful around uh, the power gain he's got. But, you know, just kind of a slog with the four star. Here, I throw my special two, and I thought that it wasn't going to push him into a special three. I end up tanking a special three. Uh, you know, it's not a good time, but we go ahead, shrug it off. We push in with Corvus Glaive next. Corvus Glaive isn't fully bleed immune, uh, but, you know, it counts. Uh, as long as I don't have to worry about my glaive charges. And he's got like two or three stacks at this point. So he just shreds through the carnage, even as a four star. Uh, so I'm just hammering in, doing like a standard parry playstyle. Uh, carnage is getting that passive power gain when he's next to me, just because the bleeds are still technically on me. Uh, but that's okay. I'm able to take him out and move on to the next fight. So the fourth boss, surprisingly, is actually Longshot. Now, Longshot has quite a few nodes on him, so this one's going to be kind of a doozy as far as explanations go. Uh, so let me let the nodes pop up on the screen. So as far as nodes, he's got crit resistance and electric fluctuations. Electric fluctuations essentially means uh, that robots have reduced ability accuracy reduction as well as uh, reduced buff duration. So for the most part, you know, just avoid bringing robots because you're not going to be able to get like a proper parry off like most of the time. Uh, but you can still bring a robot if you absolutely desire. Uh, if you bleed long shot, he'll reflect it back on you, so don't bring a bleed. Uh, even if you are bleed immune, you will still suffer a degen. So don't bring like a bleeding, you know, debuff immune or someone who can shrug like Ronin, because uh, you're just in for a bad time. He has limber and this node called heart attack. And heart attack is when he has, um, what's it called? Ch -ch -ch -ch, let me find it. Uh, when he has, uh, wow, I am blind. Um, while he has pure of heart active, he's aggressive, and while it's not active, uh, he's more defensive. For the most part, you can just ignore that. So this long shot fight, it's not too, too hard as long as you can get the handle on dodging his specials. Um, heavy attacks and special attacks are going to reset bad karma on yourself. As long as you have bad, bad karma, long shot is power gaining based on the amount of power you gain as well. So you don't want to bring any like power gaining champions like Hyperion or anything to this fight. But as long as you bring like a standard champion to this fight, uh, it's a fairly easy takedown. Uh, even better if you have a way to like prevent power gain on long shot like uh, Captain America Infinity War or Void. Uh, just be mindful that when you're throwing those heavies, it does reset the po uh, power gain. So it's a little bit of juggling there. But honestly, I completely ignored that mechanic. It's not super important in the fight. Uh, what you need to know is don't bring a power gaining champion. Uh, otherwise, the special one, the way to dex it is it's a laser followed by a projectile. Uh, and if you happen to push him into a special two, which is not really recommended because it's a touch harder to dodge, but his special two is a projectile followed by a distraction followed by a projectile from above, similar to Iceman's special two. Uh, and it's really not that hard to dodge either once you get the hold of it, but it does do a pretty good amount of block damage if you end up blocking it. Uh, and then finally, I think like the last tip uh, is really, really make sure that you don't get hit by the special one. Because if you are baiting the special one and you take that hit, you're 
probably going to die almost immediately. So I go in here with Guillotine 2099. I know I have reduced ability accuracy reduction here. I'm not too worried. I'm just going to hammer into Long Shot and see if I can get any damage. So you can see here, uh, his MVP animation is super cool. Really, really love it. Um, and I'm like trying to understand this. Combo Shield saves me because I didn't realize it was a projectile. I thought it was just the one initial special one. Uh, but now we know it's a laser followed by a projectile. You can see here I'm like holding my block and re-parrying because I can't rely on a uh, proper parry. I screw up there and don't actually finish my combo into the medium, so he ends up blocking me through. Not the greatest showing from Guillotine 2099, uh, but you know, just kind of a, a hit special two too fast. So next up, we're going to go in with Omega Red. Uh, because again, you don't really need any particular counter for this fight. Uh, you can really just bring in a heavy hitter. I'm going to go in for a parry, uh, and I'm trying to do like my standard 5-hit combo, push him into the corner to get the most out of my spores, because I really want to get a heavy off and start that passive degen, uh, and get the most out of uh, my Omega Red without having to dodge too many specials. You can see it's a laser, followed by a projectile dex, so it's not just get too far away, it's also properly dex the, the knife. It's a little small, but once you uh, know what you're looking for, uh, it's not too bad. Standard laser. Projectile Dex, nothing too complicated. You don't have to worry about it clipping you if you're not far enough. Uh, it's just a standard Dex, very, very easy. Here, I push him into a Special 2. Haven't seen the Special 2 animation, so there's a projectile. You can see there's a lot of animations, and then a Disco Ball falls on you from the head. Uh, it might be like Rafter Lights or something, honestly. I'm not too sure yet, uh, but yeah, uh, if you're not looking for it, you might be Dexing out of panic, but just hold block your first couple of times until you know what you're looking for. But after that, fight is fairly easy. So personally, I thought the long shot fight wasn't that bad. It's this next fight, this Omega Red, uh, where it actually starts to get tricky. So Omega Red, uh, as always, play a robot. If you have a robot, a robots are just like a general anti-Omega Red counter. But if you don't have a robot, you can still manage. Uh, I think like Ghost worked really well for me here. I think a Taunter would work okay, uh, as long as you're like mindful of Omega Red's power gain, because you do want to bait a lot of special ones. Uh, or really, really good power control champions uh, would work great. I think like Warlock is going to end up being one of the best options here, as well as Vision. Uh, but for the most part, with some like decent aggression and baiting specials from Omega Red, this fight's not too bad. It's just a little bit on the longer side. But he has physical resistance. Redouble Determination, so you absolutely don't want to be debuffing him, otherwise he'll be gaining a ton of power, uh, which makes for a bad time. Kinetic Transference 2, so every time you block a hit from him, he's gaining power. Uh, and while the name of the game is Bait Special 1s, you don't really want to be taking a lot of blocked hits. Oscillate, meaning uh, you know he'll switch between that big armor up and that big uh, attack up. And then Aspect of Evolution is one that I typically just ignore for the most part. So. Again, but like general tips for this fight are bait SP1s. If you're playing a robot, you can actually push him into a special two very comfortably because you don't have to worry about it doing too, too much damage here. So I jump in here with a four-star Sentinel. Uh, I went for the quick draw, which went really poor, and then I got intercepted and lost like 60% of my health right at the start of the fight. Not a good time. Definitely would not recommend, uh, but I do make a decent recovery here. So now I'm like, okay, it's time to bait a special one. Uh, even though I don't have to worry too much about the special 2 damage, I still think it's best to like get some practice in while I'm playing Sentinel. Uh, and he's being super stingy, just kind of an unfortunate reality of the AI sometimes. He throws the special 1 and you can immediately punish. That's a good time. And if you're not playing a robot, all that time you've spent baiting special 1s is used dropping spores. So that's good as well. Uh, he throws another special 1. I push him up against... Uh, for like a 5 hit combo, and this time I p accidentally pushed him into a special 2. It's not too big a deal. As you can see here, even like a 4 star sentinel, I'm not taking too much damage because I don't have very many spores on me. I throw a special 3 to get some extra distance. This was intentional because I need to like time out the special 2 slash make sure the spores stay off of me so I'm not taking any kind of damage. Uh, but he is at a special 2 again, so I need to like get him to throw that. Properly bait this one here. And then go right back in. So even like a 4-star Sentinel, 4-star Vision, uh, all these champions would be really, really good. Just because robots are like Omega Red's kryptonite. Makes for a good time. Uh, you can see here I've got two spores and I'm barely losing any health even while his death field is active. Uh, he's down to 64% from Sentinel. Not the best showing on my part, but I did lose, you know, 60% of my health from the start of the fight. And here I'm probably trying to bait special ones. Uh, see if I can't get the most out of it, but I'm up against the wall and in hindsight, maybe maybe I should have just gone in for some free damage and then uh, 
let him throw a special two. But I'm using the like hit into his block tactic to get some distance and get some proper spacing. Dex a proper special one here, and I get another five hit combo. Here, I'm trying to bait the special one. It goes well. Uh, and maybe here I should have thrown a special three for some distance, but I'm thinking I can just throw one more combo, put him into another special one. Uh, times are going pretty good. So far, I've got like a nice, really good bait special one punish rotation with Sentinel, and that's really where you want to be against this Omega Red, uh, because that's like the best kind of place to be as far as damage concern goes. Uh, and again, you can use the dash in hit into his block to like get spacing control and distance on him. Uh, but yeah, this time I'm think I'm just a little too slow. Throws a heavy. It's a long fight with a four-star Sentinel. Yeah, so he wasn't throwing the special. I was just a little too slow, but not too bad for a four-star Sentinel showing. Uh, I think I go in with Ghost next. And Ghost works fairly well for Omega Red as long as you're mindful to not let yourself go over 10 spores and that you don't let him trigger Death Field. Because once that Death Field is up, man, it's a bad time all around. So half his health, four star ghost, standard uh, two phase and then counter, one phase counter. I'm just trying to build up to a special two and then time it to an intercept. I'm up to 10 spores, so you can see here I back off. Conveniently, he throws his special one at exactly that moment. I'm able to get a cheeky special two intercept here, knock him down all the way to 4%. Uh, yeah, and even a four star ghost, like absolutely crushes this guy. I'm at 1% and I actually thought I was going to die here. Uh, I didn't, so I'm like, oh wow, all I have to do is recover, and I might be able to take down this Omega Red. Uh, he throws his special one, I'm able to dash in, get a nice little hit, phase, special one intercept, good times. That was definitely a clutch moment, feels very, very good. So now we have the last fight, Mojo. Now, fair warning, this Mojo fight... It's a little bit tricky and there's a lot going on. So I have my notes for all of these fights in the description. If you need to read them, you need to read them. Uh, that's where they'll be. So Mojo, <sighs> what do we say about Mojo? So Mojo has energy resistance, power bond. Uh, power bond means that uh, power draining abilities are 90% less effective, which is no fun. Uh, recovery, so his healing is 200% more. He shifts immunities between bleed and poison. And then this ability called Rising Sun. So when the defender is struck, the attacker gains a theory buff, granting 2.5% attack rating for 25 seconds. Once the attacker has 10 theories, any additional ones will inflict a passive degen on you, dealing a ton of damage over 4 seconds. Uh, so if you land a heavy, your fury buffs are removed. So essentially, the name of the game against Mojo is Parry Heavy. You might think, oh, 25 seconds, that's a long time. But the thing is that Mojo has this ability where whenever he triggers one of his prompts or you trigger one of his prompts, he gets an anti-life field. And that anti-life field for 7 seconds makes all of the buffs on your champion have like significantly reduced duration. So if you're not doing the Parry Heavy playstyle, as soon as a prompt is triggered, you're almost just immediately dead to degenerate. It makes for a really bad time. And those prompts are special attack, charge a heavy, dash backwards, block a hit, use dexterity mastery, hold block, or stun the opponent. And if you or Mojo does one of those actions while that prompt is active, and it will say, it flashes on your screen, you'll see here in a moment, um, then uh, he triggers that anti-life field. Any kind of buff on you from the Furies will just almost immediately fall off and you'll just degen to death makes for a bad time additionally uh you want to make sure uh because mojo actually also applies a degeneration you want to make sure uh that you don't trigger uh dexterity too too often at, at all because dexterity when you hit mojo and you trigger that dexterity uh like extra crit chance or it's removed uh you're also going to get a big degen and it makes for a really bad time uh so finally there's one other way you can get a buff so um, besides dexterity and besides the theories, so parry heavy, uh, don't dexterity, there is something called a hater buff. So you gain this when essentially four prompts or four to five prompts have been triggered uh, successfully in a row. Uh, and then when a prompt is triggered, Mojo places a hater buff on you and that hater buff will also be removed very quickly because of the node uh, slash the anti-life field and then you will degen to death. Uh, you actually see this in one of my fights. It happens to me, uh, and I had to look back and see what happened. So essentially, you want to pay attention to the prompts, uh, and when there's a prompt that you can like wait out, you want that to fail, because when it fails, uh, Mojo loses like 
most of his followers uh, and he has to re-ramp back up to five in order to make sure that he's like properly uh, going to be able to place that buff on you for the free degen. So you do parry heavy play style uh, and watch out for the prompts because every prompt you can make it fail, make it fail. So if the prompt is like, you know, uh, charge a heavy, just don't ever charge a heavy. Just only parry back off, parry back off and let the prompt fail. Or if the prompt is like throw a special attack, just don't throw your special attacks and then hope Mojo doesn't throw his either. Uh, because as the more prompts you can get him to fail, the less likely you are to have that hater buff fall on you. And you can be more mindful and only do this uh, like making the prompts fail when you're close to him hitting 5 million followers. But it's honestly just easier to do it whenever you get the chance because I didn't even realize uh, and it totally obliterated me. So like other tips on Mojo is bait the special one. I know that's a lot going on for this fight. Bait the special one. One, don't dex parry heavy make as many prompts fail as possible because it's you or mojo can trigger them so you don't want to do those abilities either uh otherwise it makes for a bad time so like some general champions i think are going to be really good for this fight are warlock because he does have uh that infection which passively heal blocks which is going to be needed because mojo has a small like a pretty good heal that can consistently pop up which makes for an annoying fight Corvus Glaive, uh, because Corvus Glaive, as long as you have Glaive Charges, is, you know, not going to die from passive degen, uh, which is going to help out a lot. Human Torch, if you're using the parry heavy playstyle, uh, you'll mitigate a lot of the healing sets potentially, reverse it if possible, uh, and he's not, like, super uh, buff-reliant like a lot of champions. Gladiator Hulk, because the face me mechanic does trigger from the degen, it's still a lot of damage. And Mojo hurts really hard, but it's definitely going to help out a bit. Void, if you can properly stall out long enough, is a really good option here, but it's not like for the best. Quake works to an extent, but the problem is uh, eventually when uh, Mojo like succeeds on a prompt, uh, he's also going to gain power. So when you're playing Quake and Quake and Shake in the corner, like Dex works, you know, dashing back, black, dashing backwards, charging a heavy Dex, all these are like potential prompts that's going to cause you to like push mojo into a bar of power with quake and once he's got a bar of power you have to like uh be really really careful because you can't even hit him because if you hit him shrugging the decks is going to cause a degen so it's really not a good time but quake works to an extent i used her on him to like relative success ghost plus hood synergy is a good option here luke cage uh can work sort of well spider gwen is a great option not because she like interacts a lot with mojo in general but because her parry heavy just does a lot of damage uh so that makes for a really good time archangel will be uh relatively okay here uh just be mindful that the ability accuracy doesn't work against the ability accuracy reduction doesn't work against the prompts as well as domino and sunspot these are the champions i think that are going to work uh, pretty well against Mojo. Domino might be a little bit hit or miss, but uh, you can see here I go in with Guillotine, and I thought I had like 25 seconds to trigger a, a heavy, uh, and I didn't. He triggered his anti life field, and just all those Furies immediately fall off of me and just insta dead. And I was like, I honestly have no idea what happened. Uh, so at this point, I'm like rereading the nodes, and I'm like, okay, so I can only parry heavy. People on the live chat really helped me out here, and I'm like, all right, well, let's go in with Quake and see how much of it we can just bypass. So he's at 86%, not too bad. Uh, I'm able to just, you know, parry uh, heavy, shake my way into the corner. Uh, the first prompt doesn't trigger, I'm lucky. The next one is stun a champion, which unfortunately I trigger immediately. So he's already passed a prompt there. Uh, and then you can see here, like on the top right of the corner, it says dodge a hit, anti-life field gain. Uh, so I dodged a hit, meaning that uh, that prompt triggers. You can see that I have this big degen because I accidentally heavy mojo. Uh, so the precision buff from dexterity just places a ton of damage on you. Uh, and again, uh, prompts are not affected by uh, the uh, ability accuracy. So concussion doesn't work against mojo either. Uh, and every time he's like succeeding on a prompt here, he's gaining some power. But again, I've got him pretty well down. Quake is like relatively good. It's only here once he's got uh, like a bar of power that I need to switch play styles. I'm not able to get the parry and in the res end, I just end up dying as a result. Uh, but a pretty good run with Quake. I'd say that it becomes more of a problem the weaker your Quake is. Like a really strong Quake can still take him down uh, just like in timing window. And she's going to be a really good option for the most part. Uh, but here I'm like, okay, 45,000. That's not too bad. Uh, so we're going to move forward uh, with Void because I think Void's going to be a good answer. But you'll see very quickly uh, that I, I screw up. 
so this is where the whole dexing comes into play uh, slash the hater buffs so the first prompt here I think is parry or block or something so uh, nothing too scary I'm just trying to get like a parry heavy play style this next one is charge a heavy uh, so I'm not throwing my heavy because I don't want to trigger that prompt uh, I'm gonna let it fall uh, that prompt fails, which is really nice. And again, charge a heavy. I just can't help but feel like I got a little memed. I'm losing some of my space here, uh, but I'm able to do like a proper parry. This one sucks. Dash backwards. So even if Mojo dash backwards, uh, it's just like bad for me. And he does, so the prompt activates. Just bad times all around. Uh, I'm able to do like my parry heavy again here. And now it's stun a champion, so now I can't stun him. I don't trigger dexterity here, uh, but you'll see here that I trigger that last one by accidentally stunning him he's up to five i get the hater buff uh that's what was on me and that's immediately removed from the anti-life field and i just go down so quick so void kind of works it's just tough uh you know it's really not the greatest answer just because his damage output takes a little while to ramp up but if you're like lacking options it can be there it's just definitely one of my last suggestions so now i decide to go in here one more time uh, I'm bringing Omega Red, just trying to get the most damage out of him I can. Uh, the only issue is that Mojo does have like a mechanic that allows him to heal, uh, which makes for a bad time. Every time a prompt like succeeds, he gets a 3% heal. That 3% is boosted, so it turns into a 6% heal. So even though I've got like degen on him and stuff, I'm actually like not able to get any proper damage. Uh, and the Fury buffs and my aggressive play uh, get me killed faster than I can get any kind of relative damage off, and he actually ends up healing. So I go in, I saved Gulk for last, he's only got 17,000 health, so I bring Gulk in and I know I know that one, I have to do a parry heavy play style, and two, I really want to throw a special one with Gulk to get that uh, heal block off. So I do um, my standard parry heavy, I got lucky, the first one's a hold block, so he hasn't triggered a prompt yet, uh, as long as he doesn't hold block. Uh, I get my another parry off here, we're almost at a special one, the life field is active, I see that I'm dying to... Um, the hater buff triggering off in the degen. So I'm going to full combo in, throw a special one with a stun, and then hammer into him now that I don't have to worry about heal. Uh, the special two here is really tough to dodge, so I advise that you mostly block. Uh, and again, I'm not too worried about the degen damage because of the face me mechanic. And you can see that Hulk Rag works fairly well, especially if you play the fight properly instead of greedily like I do. Uh, and that said, what we have last here is just kind of a quick bonus. These are some Cavalier Crystals that I spun out on the live stream. I'll skip ahead to them. Uh, so I spun out, I think, three or four. I spun out one saying, you know, I'll buy it one and see how it goes. Uh, and, you know, it goes... You know, the way Cavalier Crystals go, it's spinning, it's spinning, all this good stuff is passed by me, and 3-star Psylocke. Um, not what I wanted from a Cavalier Crystal. Not gonna lie, it hurt. It hurt. It hurts now, and it hurt on the live stream. So, uh, at that moment, I was like, alright, we'll buy one more, uh, cause, you know, getting a 3-star Psylocke, not a good time. Uh, you know, so we can buy one more, and we can only go up from here, says the Optimist. Moving forward, spin this one out. It's okay. It's okay. Uh, we let it go. We got it go. We got like a six star stealth suit. Stealth suit. We got a Proxima Midnight, and then three star Vision. Uh, yeah, calf crystals, man. They sometimes they just hurt. Like if you ever wonder how my luck goes, it's because a lot of times you might be only seeing the lucky moments. Uh, so yeah, I'm like, damn. All right. So I told myself this is the last one. Like I can't two three stars. I gotta spin one more, and I even said on the stream, I said, this is the last one, you know, because if this one's a bust, obviously there's no value in spinning him out. I saw a six-star Nick Fury. I would have loved duping my Namor, because that's like a max sig, and it's like almost there on the Medusa. I really want a five-star Medusa. Falcon. Uh, yeah, you know, that's just how it goes. Uh, that's pretty much it. So that said, I hope this guide has helped you. I hope the gameplay maybe is refreshing. Uh, and if you're like, hey, I really want to see a one-shot instead because it doesn't mean as much if you're not one-shotting, I'll look into posting those videos later this month uh, once I do it myself. But hopefully for those of you who are too impatient, uh, you know, and want to see how to handle these fights now, this is my take. Hope you guys have a great time. Talk to you later. Peace.